Hi out there. I thought I would do a little live feed this morning, which we'll post later on. Um, it's early in the day. Customers have left the store. So I've got a couple minutes here by myself and I thought I'd show you some cool things that came in. Now, I am selling lots of stuff. And yes, we're doing a couple big auctions coming up this month. And uh, December 5th is when the antique sale is going to be. But I had to show you some cool stuff that's come in around the shop and also show you some things that are in the back of my trunk from going on a pick yesterday. So follow along as I do a little walkabout through the store, show you some of the things that I think were neat that walked in. And uh, then we'll go out and grab some stuff out of the vehicle and show you a fresh pick. We'll go through a box of stuff that came in. So here we go. We're going to flip the camera around. Um, store, the general store stuff is still doing well at the front of the shop. We had all these great projectors and movie spotlights come in. Uh, this is a ticket taker, of course, that came in in a uh, previous episode, but we had a couple of these massive ships come through. Now, I had a gentleman who was actually watching one of my uh, feeds the other day, and he saw that the ship was in the background. It's massive. I mean, it's probably four or five feet long and equally tall. It goes almost all the way up to the ceiling. But the detail on them is quite remarkable. So that's just a nice little piece. So he, he phoned me up and said, Ah, I saw you had a ship like that. Well, heck, I've got one too. So I'm going to scan kind of past some of our military stuff here. The Titanic in the background. Pith helmets from the Boer War. There's the uh, beaded skull that I got. Uh, at any rate, this gentleman that saw me on, on, uh, on the news, I think it was, or on one of our feeds, said, well, I've got one in my basement. It took him over a year to build. So this is the one that he did. Of course, I had to buy it too. Look at all the tiny little cannons in there. Makes me want to jump on board. But he went to extra efforts and actually did tiny little copper plates all along the bottom. So uh, to purchase a kit like that, so that was a kit. You can buy them new and you can build them. You have to actually build them just like a real ship. You have to build the, the skeleton of the ship, uh, the framework, and then plank it just like the real thing. Um, the kit itself was over $500 plus another $75 or so just in copper. Um, so a big investment. Then you think, well, it took the guy a year of his time to build that and put it together. So um, I thought that would be so cool in the shop. Of course, lots of little toys. I always love it when fun toys and collectibles come in. But let's walk out, and I'm going to show you what is in the back of my vehicle. We're going to call it what's in the trunk. And you can see the snow has melted off. Uh, a ship, somebody was asking, a ship like that is probably close to $1,000 after you've put a year of your life into working on it. Let's see what's in the back of the vehicle. So I went out the other day and uh, went to a house that they were clearing out. And uh, they had some stuff set aside, sort of, uh, that they didn't know what to do with, whether it was going to go to charity or not. So I got myself this funky little, this would be a record player. I just thought it was kind of neat. Uh, I think it's upside down. Yeah, it's upside down. An old RCA Victor turntable it should open like that there you go very basic needs some cleaning and stuff but it's got that sort of sparkly fabric on the front looks really cool i actually use these lamps in my showcases so anytime i find a lamp like this i pick it up because they make great um well they make lights <laughs> so uh it looks like i'm gonna have to do a cable on it there's no way you're gonna want to plug that in um, so I might uh, just run out to the store and get a new cable. I'll have to wire it probably all the way through up to the top because it's uh, really deteriorated bad. But still, I can do something with that. Um, look at this cute little register. Benjamin Franklin cash register. This would have been a kid's toy probably from the 1920s or so. And so, the idea, I think, is it's a piggy bank. Oh, look. I'm rich. <laughs> Let's see. One Canadian buck. I didn't know it was full of play money. That's kind of cool. Actually, there's other stuff mixed in here too. It'd be nice if you'd open that up and it was full of actual money. But uh, I'm rich in play money anyway. But that's a fun kind of thing, isn't it? Neat little piece. It looks just like a real national cash register too. It's very, very well put together. So, got that. Um, this would be sort of like a, a tourist-made doll. Probably, I'm guessing, from uh, from India based on the uh, the clothing probably 1940s or so really nicely done i don't usually buy dolls but if they're uh if they're well looked after and these little sewing machines they always sell i get them in and they sell so this is a, a child's toy, toy sewing machine but it is one that actually works you can see um it's going up and down there you'd crank it you can actually sew with this thing and uh so anytime i find one like this uh, because they sell so easily i always pick it up uh, of course, I had to get a couple little wind-up toys here, too. So we've got a wind-up dog uh, who... See the little legs going there? 
he wants to work. Oh, hey, he stops and he kind of barks a little bit. That's cool. An old 50s thermos. These are things that when I'm walking around someone's house, I kind of go, yeah, that's cool, that's neat. You know, maybe you buy it now and uh, research it later, which is what I'll probably do later today. And um, you're just always looking for something fun. Here's the original uh, Toy Story Woody. I think it's from, uh, let's see, what year is this from? If it's from the 90s, like 96 or so, it's gonna be from the original show. Uh, it might be a little bit newer than that. A lot of times they put the date on the back, but the fact it has, you know, like, um, well, I don't, oh yeah, there's a website on the back. Well, it doesn't matter. It's still kind of neat. It's a talking Woody the cowboy. <laughs> when you see that in a house and they just want it gone, sometimes you just pick up stuff because you think it's kind of cool on their own. Um, you guys remember this, the talking bartender. I'll have to, uh, well, he doesn't talk. He actually, uh, he mixes himself a drink and then he blows smoke out of his ears. Uh, uh oh, looks like someone had left the batteries in on the bottom. That's never a good sign. Yeah, there's like the world's oldest batteries. Rayovac batteries, probably from the 50s, probably as old as that toy was left inside of it. And you can see when you leave a battery inside, uh, it causes some damage. So I doubt very much whether this thing is going to work. That said, you know, didn't want to leave it. Uh, this was kind of a neat piece too. This is a uh, inkwell. Nice little, I believe that's marble with a hinge on an inkwell. Beautiful little thing. It's had one screw replaced at some point, but that's probably, you know, teens, 20s era. But for somebody who writes with a, uh, a quill pen or something, that's a really neat thing. Little Argus camera. They call that the brick, I think. And there's the uh, case for it as well. This, I didn't, it looked like it was going to be cutlery set in this box. And it's a uh, Lamy student dulcimer. So it even has the tiny little mallets in here. Kind of cute. Probably dates to the 1930s or 40s based on that construction. Uh, but the one thing that I thought was really, really cool uh, was this. This is a uh, little miniature, it's called a model totem pole. And I, I'm gonna grab the pieces. Oh, look, there's Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. We're gonna grab this and we're gonna go inside. I'm gonna flip the camera while I talk to you guys. Okay, hi guys. And I do have customers showing up at the store right now. So I'm gonna go inside and get my mask put on. You can head in. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna, hi guys, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Come on in. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna show you guys. I am. Uh, open for business right now. So as people kind of come through the shop, you'll have to bear with me here. And uh, we do, are taking our precautions. So when there's other people around, we are masking up and all that. So let's flip this around and I'll show you the totem pole and then I'll log out and I'll get back to business as usual. So back in the 40s and 50s, um, indigenous artists on the west coast of Canada would make these little totem poles to sell to tourists. And uh, I saw this sitting on the shelf and I didn't, I just thought, okay, well, that's cool. It's a little totem pole. And I do have a collection of um, indigenous art and artifacts. Oh, hang on. I'm just going to grab the door there. <laughs> nice to see you guys. And uh, okay, we'll get back to the totem pole here. Uh, but this one I'm actually familiar with. You can see it's much more detailed than your average sort of uh, tourist totem pole. The person who did this um, definitely had a tradition of carving. And when I look at the back... It's signed Ellen Neal, 1955. And I actually, a friend of mine asked me to help him sell a couple totem poles uh, that were made for, they weren't spiritual totem poles, they were ones made for a shopping mall back in the 50s and we found a owner for them. But what a cool piece that is. So I actually have somebody coming to look at that today. Just a lovely little piece. So whether it's ships coming in or whether it's old cameras <laughs> or guitars, uh, I never know what's going to walk in the door in a day. So uh, thank you guys so much for uh, watching our, our kind of mini walkthrough today as uh, we walk around the shop and look at some of the cool collectibles and things that we have around the store. So if you're in the Edmonton area, pop by for a visit sometime. If you haven't subscribed to us, make sure to subscribe. But I hope you guys uh, all have a uh, wonderful day. Oh, somebody's asked, is that a graph? It's yes, it's a graphics camera. It's a crown graphic. That's like what your reporter would have used back in the day. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to get back to work here. You guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you all soon.